Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Ted, hanging out with Dave. And uh, today we're going to you know, get back to what does your class say about you, and we're going to talk Warlock. Uh, but before we make any packs, go down to the description where you can find Nerdarchy, the newsletter, and you can make a pact with us to get weekly gaming tips and even game with Nerdarchy. So the Warlock, it's you know fifth edition's uh, you know favored class. It's got a lot of a lot of options, but when you roll up at the table and say I'm a Warlock, what does it say about you? Yeah, that's a good question. Like you know, a, a lot of times the the class that you play and the choices you make within that class will really start to define that character's personality. Now the the, the funny thing about the Warlock is. It's not like you didn't train to be a warlock. Mm -hmm. You didn't study magic. You weren't born a certain way. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know. It's it's all, it's most similar to the cleric, yet different. Right. You know, uh, the warlock represents a covenant between you and a powerful being. Right. And that could come about because you sought it out. Mm -hmm. That could come at, come at, come about because, you know, in a dire situation, you called out for help, and this is the thing that answered you. Perhaps there's something special about you, and the power sought you out. True. Like, what you know? What if you were like, you know, born under uh, a certain circumstances? Right. You know, uh, if if you look at um. The Dresden Files. Harry Dresden, mm -hmm. in, in a lot of ways, is has a war, has had warlock packs right. throughout his career, and and you know, and they talk about like, uh, th well, this might be a spoiler, it might not be, I don't know. There, there's a bunch of books out, <laughs> um, but they talk about how, you know, he was born in, uh, under, you know, a, a certain. Um, configuration of stars right. and that's why he's you know one of the reasons why he's special mm -hmm. now they don't say that's why that the the, the fae have saw him out or answered mm -hmm. him but it could very well be a possibility right so a warlock i don't think like where other classes because because like a wizard a rogue a, a fighter all those classes even a ranger they have to spend so much time training mm -hmm. and actively seeking to become that thing mm -hmm. it really does begin to define who they are right now one of the things that you know i think it bears mentioning is like in game terms you know your class says what you are but once you actually get to the the role playing like who walks around like oh yes i'm a warlock you know like, well that's exactly it you know, so like a, a fighter you know that class more so defines your profession you're mm -hmm. a soldier or you're a warrior mercenary you're mm -hmm. a mercenary you know you, you you've trained for that but other, you're right like other classes like a sorcerer or a warlock you know by some other uh means you've taken on this power so no like you don't you, you, you're not going to define yourself as that thing. Right. It's it's just a part of you. Like it, it could literally be, you know, it could be this this thing that's hovering over you that you always have to answer to. But you're right. You're not going to roll up in the town and you know you're in the tavern and you know you're sitting there so with Bob, you, so Bob the do? fighter. Yeah. So what do you do? Oh, uh, I serve the Dark Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not going to be like, oh well, uh, you see, uh, I really crave power. And I, I sold my soul to a demon so that I can I can burn my enemies before me. It's not gonna. It's not how you're gonna introduce yourself unless you're angling for the villain slot in the town. <laughs> unless you're super goth. <laughs> so you know, realistically, you know, you know, are, are you gonna walk around saying you know you're you're a mage, you're a sorcerer, you know, like are you gonna define yourself as what your background is? You know, oh well. Uh, I'm a noble, and I just I've got these abilities, or I'm. You know. Well, you might not talk about the abilities at all. Like you might just talk about, you know, what it, you know, what makes you a noble. What does your family do? Like you may, you know, or you know, maybe you're a guild artisan, and you know, so, so well, you know, you I'm a blacksmith. Well, it's kind of odd. You're not blacksmithing. You're here. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, so there's there's definitely things like that. Um, or yeah, you know, or you might have to find something completely else to, to kind of define your character. You know, does he have a lifelong goal or ambition? And you know, that's why he's accepted the, this uh, this uh, covenant with the, with the, this otherworldly being. Right. But, yeah, yeah, I guess it would probably be an otherworldly being. Yeah, because it's usually you know, fae, a celestial, a fiend. 
you know, so it's not something that's that's na- you know that's natural to hear. Um, you know, if you get into you know some alternative ideas, um, like a dragon, you know, you could do you know a, a dragon as as definitely something that's powerful enough if it's something that's you know been around the block for a while. But now, like as you as your warlock levels, right? Um, you 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 get you, you get to pick your boon, right? So, where I feel like no matter what your um, your patron is, that doesn't actually have to really influence your character's personality per se, because that could be the thing that you re- you when you reached out reached back or what whatever like that that could have absolutely nothing to do with what kind of person your character is. Right. But I do believe his pack boon absolutely defines what kind of a person he is. Right. Yo, uh, pack the change. You've li- you've literally used your uh, your right. covenant with this other worldly being to to um, basically enslave another creature. Yes, you know you're getting you know you're you're getting you know some, you know te- typically it's it's imps, but you know you could technically an imp that to closet else. sprite or you know or or a cat. Right. <laughs> you know, like you could get something else, and you know mm-hmm. there's there's nothing to say that you couldn't take that same set of stats. And create something that fits more with what you're um, what you're serving, um, you know. But those those things, okay. Well, you're taking back to the chains, back to the blade, back to the tome. Each of those each of those things define you. Are you getting a servant? Are you getting access to spells? Are you being mo- a more martial character? Well, yeah, like because like the the book of shadow might, you know. You know, it could either be you know you're just a more cerebral character, or that's you know that's how you want to ex- exude and exhibit the power from your from your your, your patron. You know, in, in in that very you know in a more of a magical eldritch arcane arcane way, or like you said, the pack of the blade. Well, that really makes you more of a martial character, mm-hmm. and uh, more prone to more more prone to you know in your face physical violence. Than casting spells or or working operating through a servitor, right? Um, so that character might be more aggressive, more confident uh, than and you know and just more physical than the other the other versions. Right. Uh, or you know you could go the same way too. I feel like with the chains a little bit too. Like you could be like a domineering person, uh, a bully. Yeah. yeah, and that's why you choose it. You know, if you went back, or or a manipulator, right? If you went back to the tome, you you as you said, you could be more cere- cerebral. You care more about you know the the mental stats, and you know you use this bargain to you know gather and and possibly share knowledge that you're attempting to prevent something from happening, and you're you're willing to you know give of yourself so that those around you. You know, will will profit. Yeah, like the, uh, another, like a lot of times, and it, it, it's become pretty uh, trite at this point. Is the I'm a warlock because I was going to die, and something offered me a chance to live, right? <laughs> like over and over again. Like so, so I really want to do a warlock and do something different because I've seen that enough times. I've done it. It's, it's time for something new. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. What about the warlock that sees himself as actually you know sacrificing of himself in order to help the greater well, good? The the warlock that I played in uh, in Scott's game that we we didn't play here. Um, I, I took a whole new spin on, on Warlock. I said, you know, rather than me having made a bargain, I stole power. You know, we, you know, it was a higher level game, so I took Warlock as a multi-class later on to complement my sorceress powers. And I found a book that talked about this, this greater power. And while everyone was you know, in my adventuring party was resting for the evening, I wound up just reading this book and I couldn't put it down. I couldn't draw my eyes away from it. Well, by the time I finished reading, I didn't remember a single thing that I read, but I I wound up creating this bond between me and this sleeping power that's out in the cosmos. And... Like I was siphoning power from him, so my warlock levels were literally stolen. And I put it out there, you know, for the DM to use. It's like, all right, there's this, you know, power that's out there. He's got agents, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do with it. But here's an enemy for you, and if he <laughs> yeah. comes after me and I die, you know, so be it. But 
rather than me making a bargain. <laughs> or you might just show up and be like, oh, by the way, you are for me. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yes. You read the book. You, that, that's like signing on the dotted line. So I, I stole power and, you know, I got to, you know, go through this whole thing. And it was it was interesting rather than, you know, it. I just see this little given. disclaimer at the end of the book. <laughs> Therefore, by here, reading this book and completing this line, you agree to the aforementioned blah, blah, blah. Yes. All and, legalese. <laughs> you know, and mind wipe. <laughs> and, and that's, and that's you know, kind of kind of what it is. It's like, you know, so it's, it's a cool role-playing thing. It's the other way around. You know, I, I, I'm stealing it, I'm taking it, you know, and it's up to them to you know, decide whether, you know, the DM is gonna go along with it whether he's gonna just leave it out there floating so it was, it was cool yeah so like the the more interesting like concept or, or way of going about your warlock pact would um will influence heavily like what kind of character that you've created you know whether it's like you know the 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 lifeboat character that did it to save their life and does that mean they're willing to do anything to preserve themselves right. you know what does it really say about them or the character you know that unwittingly unwittingly enters into this bargain you know or the, is it because they're naive and and that's a, a big uh a stumbling block or flaw for that character that you get to role play throughout mm -hmm. it. Uh, is it the self sacrificing character that goes, Yes, I'm, you know, really, if you look at like the original Ghost Rider character, like he, he was trying to save someone he loved, so he made a bargain with a demon. Right. You know, it could, so it could literally be something like that. You know, you make this bad choice out of, out of, out of love, not necessarily desperation, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, then you have to deal with the consequences. Like, how, how is that going to affect your character throughout his adventuring career? You know, he's kind of uh, going to be, uh, you know, harrowed by this decision throughout his whole life. And you know, depending upon what type of pact you make, what you know, both role playing and you know, and game terms, it's going to affect your character, and I think it should affect the story. Um, you know, your your warlock for you know Scott's other game, you know, you made a pact with a demon, and like you wanted to go into hell and get your soul back, and you actually did, and I did. And as a player, I didn't really ever want to do that because I didn't want to lose my warlock right. powers. And like you know, and Scott being the DM and he is, right. he did this weird thing, and he's like you know, and you know, like most of his narration, a couple die rolls, mm -hmm. and this this one thing occurred. He's like, and and like I went to hell with a, a group of people, and one of them, you know, a couple of more paladins, and one was like a fourth level paladin. And he's like, you can absolutely succeed with that die roll if you allow that paladin to die. And it's like, I will absolutely allow that paladin to die. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and so he's like, you have this little cage with a glowing ball in it, mm -hmm. and it, that, and it's your soul. Right. And he's like, you have the option of reabsorbing your soul into yourself or just keeping it in the cage, right. there, therefore keeping your warlock power, right. which was interesting and cool. Right. But, you know, but again, like, you know, so again, that was a very, like, true trait way of you know portraying the warlock pack I believe that was like my first one that I played a warlock mm -hmm. with and but like you know my decision with that was well even though he has to serve this power and he's gaining power from it he will always want to get his soul back and that's like his objective and his goal right. so I, I allowed that to like help define that character right so you guys you know in the comments below let us know how being a warlock has defined your characters in the games that you're playing. While you're at it, like, share, and subscribe. You can follow us on Twitter, at Nerdarchy. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.